I feel like if someone asks like, oh, are you okay? Or like, said good job to me, I would cry. <laughs> good job! Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Youth Council. My name is Tilly and today I'm joined with my lovely friends. Hi, I'm Florence. Hi, I'm May. And you might recognize them from the last episode. They have made the grand comeback. You know, the big return. Um, but today, instead of talking about uh, family gatherings and all of that, we'll be talking about something that might be a little more close to your heart. So we'll be talking about burnout. And I know it's currently kind of towards the end of the semester and a lot of assignments are piling up. It might be really overwhelming. So if that's something that you're currently struggling with, stay tuned. So before we get into the topic, maybe you want to give like your own definitions of what burnout means to you or what your experience is with burnout? There's, there's a lot of assignments and um, a lot of work to do at like the same period of time and so many submissions I just I just want to give up. For me burnout is mostly on like um how to say like when you have too many things going on at one go and like you just you have no energy to even deal with all of them at one go. Yeah I think my definition is pretty similar to both of your definitions. I think burnout or being burnt out is the process of overextending yourself or stretching yourself out too thin to the point where you are unable to you know contribute or you're unable to you just don't have motivation so it might be really difficult to pull yourself back out from it because once you hit that level of burnout um, it takes a long process to get out of it it's a healing process um, so we'll be talking more about that later on um, but for now should we go to the first question please so what are some problems you face when you're doing your assignments or projects perfection mm. <laughs> you strive for perfection all the time so like they always say that people who procrastinate right are, like the ones who like aim for per perfection because like mm. they don't want to start on it if they know that they cannot like get that certain target that they want to hit you know what I mean yeah. like, like if I have like a lot of assignments padding up I would go to my notes app straight away and like do a checklist so mm. it's you know so I know what to do at what time a big reason why people burn out sometimes is because maybe they leave their work till last minute mm. so within like like one week they have to complete so many things and then that can lead to them just being so exhausted. Being organized will really help. It might not get rid of it but it will definitely minimize the impact which is really good. Have y'all personally like experienced burnout? Okay so right now right I'm like I'm juggling like two CCAs um part-time work and also like there's this elective that I signed up for. The amount of Go meetings home. that we have in a week right oh my gosh I like from like when I got my computer right, I used to think like, okay, I'm gonna use it for Netflix, but now it's just MS Teams or Zoom. So like, <gasps> oh, I think um, I felt most stressed when I was taking N levels because mm -hmm. it's a huge exam that is actually like important in your life, and I wasn't really doing that well in Sec Four, especially prelims. I got really bad, <laughs> and I was um, I was unmotivated. Yeah, I think a large part of what leads to gradual or eventual burnout is being overworked for extended periods of time. You have to really prioritize whatever. If you want to do certain things, you really have to either have the passion for it or mm -hmm. you really just have to put in more effort and mm -hmm. sacrifice some, some things. Like, like, but not your sleep. Don't sacrifice sleep. It's not good. Yeah, Help yeah. overwhelm. I think it's very common for people to start like to get involved in things that they initially really really love doing and that they really enjoy so they they go into it initially with this drive and this passion and gradually as they go through the process of doing it and if it gets really stressful they lose that motivation mm -hmm. that they initially had and i think it's really sad because i mean they make it seem like we have to put in all of our effort in everything constantly all the time mm -hmm. for the rest of our life in order to be successful yeah. but that's not true and I think that kind of mindset of just do what do what do what if not I'm not gonna be successful that can lead to you losing the spark that was initially there I think once you find yourself not enjoying something as much as you used to just take a break stop doing it for a while press pause and try and find a way to recuperate would you say you have a balance for work-life balance uh, okay I don't really have a balance because even though I have a part-time job honestly I will not book when there is submission periods or when I'm really heavy in terms of school wise mm -hmm. when you're feeling 
tired or burnt out, what what do you turn to? I picked up crocheting. <gasps> and then, really? and then, okay, some people might say oh, it's like, oh, I, I get impatient and I just give up. But like, I've been so addicted. Really? I, I've made like two tops. I think reading helps too. It's mm. really calming if you if you're reading a really interesting book that you enjoy. Okay, so this is on family and friends. So how to deal with parents' expectations and what if I become tired of my friends? I think this is related to social burnout, which is a very common problem as well. I think people have the misconception that burnout only pertains to just academics and work. But social burnout is a very real thing. And especially if you have a social battery that can drain very fast. <laughs> when, when I'm out for like an hour with my friends, I'll, I'll just be like, I'll just be silent mm. after that. But as for parents' expectations, mm. I think my parents expected a lot from me as a kid, like primary school wise. <laughs> like they thought I was gonna be like top student, but I wasn't. I was always in like the second best class. Mm -hmm. I think a reason why um, people are always striving for academic excellence or just overextending themselves, it could be because of their upbringing and these certain expectations that have been placed on them since they were young. And I think that's very common in Singapore mm. because we are in such a competitive climate. Yeah. So it really depends on how you do with these things because we can't change the academic system or like the educational um, institution overnight. Okay, yeah. we need, but we can change ourselves gradually. So like, um, my friends love the call at night. Okay, yeah. So some people probably probably be like night owls, but yes, I mean understandable. So they like to call and chat. But man, I'll be like, nope. Tonight's not the night. Tonight, but every night is not the night basically <laughs> for me. So yeah. So how I deal with like this tiredness, right? It's actually I talk it out. So mm. it's very important mm. to point it out because. Honestly, for them, it's not fair that they kind of read your mind, like because sometimes mm -hmm. they give the wrong, they get the wrong the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they think that you don't want to talk or like basically trying to like keep a boundary there. But mm. it's good to like talk it out and tell them why you will not be like in a mood to talk lah. But I think it's important to have that healthy boundary so that they know when you are sort of burning out yeah. or getting tired in a way. I think. Um, sometimes friendships can be very, very high maintenance. Mm. And I don't think that's a good thing. If it's very high maintenance, if you're giving too much and not getting anything in return, it's very easy to burn up. Yes. Mm. How to pull myself back up after I'm so, so unmotivated to even get out of bed? That's a very real problem. Mm. Like not being able to get out of bed, be it in the morning or like you're just lying down scrolling through TikTok. I think. This is difficult, but sometimes the solution is really to get out of the house. Make plans with people, just like force yourself to get out of the house. And if you make plans with other people, then they can hold you accountable. I think maybe just have the thought of like, Oh, what is gonna happen if I miss school today? I'm gonna miss out on so much things and Oh, if I don't go to this place with my friends, you're gonna feel left out. Just like try to think positive things like all the possible outcomes that could happen if you did get out of your bed, out of your house. So I think it's like this idea of like high reward versus low reward or instant gratification versus delayed gratification because for example, I really believe that if you were to get out of bed and put in effort, it may be difficult but the reward of doing that is so much more valuable and fulfilling than the reward of kind of staying in bed or yeah. like sleeping for 10 more minutes. And it doesn't, you don't have to get out of bed and like run a marathon. I think there's this unhealthy expectation that when we start our day, we have to have a whole list of things that we need to accomplish. But I think if you kind of hold this expectation to just do one thing just accomplish something meaningful with your day then that's enough you know sometimes yeah. even just getting out of bed and taking a shower is more than enough just only three words and it's just you are enough you know you don't have to achieve a lot of things you know mm. so like really self-care is mm. actually something that is very commendable already you know because mm. not many people know how to take care of themselves yeah. right? mm. basing off of this topic of self-care do you think it helps personally I I mean, most of the time for me, I guess it will kind of boost your confidence and boost yeah. your morale. Yeah. Mm. I feel like it's uh, if you do it every day, mm. it you're gonna see improvements yeah. because you're gonna you're gonna be taking care of your skin, your hair, um, your diet, and you're gonna feel more energized and healthy in and a way. Emotional self care. Yeah, well. yeah. I think it's really about the consistency of your self care and the intentions of it as well. You can't just do a face mask and expect that it's going to make you feel better. You mm, need to put in yeah. the time and the effort 
to care for yourself. Don't be lazy with your self-care, okay? The more you put in effort for yourself, I'm sure it's gonna reflect on how you show effort to the next. Yeah. Also talking about self-care, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we all think generally what self-care will be like. Yeah. Like doing face masks, but for some people, it literally can be lying in bed the whole day mm -hmm. and playing games. I think there's this misconception that self-care just relates to physical self-care. But there are so many different kinds and you really need to nurture all of them in order to feel fulfilled as a person. So yeah. there's the psychological self-care related to your mental health and yeah. intellectual self-care. Are you learning things? Are you, are you trying to educate yourself and like grow as a person? And there's also the emotional self-care. Are you taking time to relate? Legs. There's different kinds and you really need to work on all of them to prevent burnout. I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about this idea of sincerity versus seriousness. Mm -hmm. And like they were saying life is a game, you either treat it with full seriousness or sincerity. So it's like this this idea of in the end, what really matters is our own personal fulfillment and what are we doing to reach that goal. Is it about success? Is it about wealth, money? I'm, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's about aspiration and, and passion and love and stuff like that. I think it's whatever rocks your boat. La. Like you say, mm. maybe some chase money, some chase passion. Yeah. Either way, it's just about what you prioritize in life. Mm -hmm. I used to be influenced by my dad because he would say like, oh, you have to be first in everything, mm. you know. If you're, if you're not quick at doing things, you're going to be last. And it was really negative, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, an unhealthy mindset. Because you're not in a competition with anyone. It's yeah. just you. You're on your own path and you can take your time. As, you can take however long as you want because mm -hmm. it's your own finishing line. It, it really depends on your own mindset and how you cultivate it to make it healthy and sustainable so that you will be able to keep going in the long run. Even though you might be getting 10 assignments done, all of your presentations are out and you're like, you're like working overtime, it might seem like it's a good thing but in reality, is it really? I feel like if someone asked like, oh, are you okay? Or like said good job to me, I would cry. <laughs> good job! Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you handle that? How do I just, just cry? Just I, secretly. A relief. You know, a little emotional relief. But I feel like another reason why burnout occurs is because of the pent up emotions that are not being released. Mm. You know? Like you are just, all of this stress and anxiety is building up over time. And one day you're just going to <laughs> snap and break. <laughs> so we hope our video um, answered all your inquiries and questions and that you learned something from us. Also, do keep a lookout for our next episode and if you have any questions, just feel free to drop it in. So thank you to both of you for sharing your personal experience today mm -hmm. and giving advice to all of our lovely viewers. And we hope that, you know, you are able to take away something and we hope that mm, hopefully you can cope better. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment subscribe, you already know the drill, and we will see you in the next episode. Bye! Bye.